Good morning or afternoon, evening, whenever you happen to listen to this devotional. Um, it's good to be here. Good to be with you. Um, I have to warn you right up front that I'm not sure what you're getting today. <laughs> um, so much has happened in my life. Um, so much has happened in this world. Um, I'm not totally sure, so we'll see. But um, I did want to let you know before I jump in that um, we have some exciting things happening. Um, we're starting, uh, well, you know, we had Latanya speak last week, which was amazing. She did such a great job. And really what we want to do is use this time of devotionals till the end of the year for many sisters, many voices in our, in our fellowship to speak to us from our region. So um, we're going to call that Women's Devotional Soul Sisters, which I am so excited about. I, I look forward to hearing all these women, uh, their perspectives and um, I think we're going to keep the focus on God's promises, his faithfulness, his goodness, however they want to talk about it. So um, that's super exciting, really encouraging. I'm looking forward to it. Um, the other thing um, I wanted to say is um, you guys know that, you know, my my dad passed away last month and um that, you know, he had liver cancer and he had been, you know, going along for a couple years with liver cancer. But basically in, in August, he, you know, took a turn for the worst and, um, you know, was in and out of the hospital and myself and my brothers and sisters were taking care of him. And, um, you know, I, um, there's a lot, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but, um, you know, that was a really hard time for me, but I, I did want to say thank you so much for everything that you have done for me, for every thought, every prayer, um, every text, you know, there's so much. I, I felt so loved through this time. Um, you know, I, I had, meals given to me, baskets of goodies, um, flowers, plants, cards, texts, or texts, um, you know, letters, calls, uh, just all of you, you know, there for me, supporting me, loving me. And, and honestly, I feel like I have a new understanding of that word supported. Because that is, that is how I felt. I felt so loved and so supported. Like, you know, like a really great bed when you lay on it and you feel like it just holds you. It, it takes care of you. It holds you there. And, you know, that's what you've been for me these um, last couple of, well, last month in particular. But... Um, you know, I, I just feel so blessed and so aware that I have such a blessed life and I have many, many good friends. And, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, Karina has lived with us for a couple years and of course she's blown away by the church all the time. That's, that's my niece. But she has been amazed at how much people have expressed to us, how much people have loved us. And, and I just, I want you to know, we are so thankful. We feel so, so loved. And, you know, and, and even like, you know, the, the Webbers, you know, of course, Doug is a doctor and Joanne and um, so, so helped and really along the way, you know, as I was taking care of my dad and then after he died, um, just having so many people to talk to. Um, I think I talked to people every day and it, it wasn't a burden at all. It was so helpful and so encouraging and, and uplifting. So I do want you to know that your kindness, your love, your thoughts, your prayers have made such a big difference to me and it does it makes me sad for people who don't have that and it makes me more aware of being that for other people so thank you thank you very very much um, 
I was talking with uh, Robert and <laughs> Robert and Turnwell just a couple minutes ago, and um, just I am a little bit concerned I might talk too much, but uh, if you have to pause the video and watch it at another time, that's fine. Uh, or you can sit and listen to it. And, and I guess the other concern I have is I don't want this to be about me, but I do think I have learned a lot in the last two months that I really would like to share with you. And obviously it's not even, it's not finished. I, I don't feel like I have all the answers or know everything or understand everything completely or, and hopefully I will make sense when I'm talking to you. But um, I wanted to start by reading um, in my journal, my prayer journal. Uh, I think that, you know, in the last, you know, whatever time, I have, you know, I always journal, but I think that it has really helped me process, you know, things that I have been thinking and feeling and wondering. And um, so, ah, so anyways, I hope, you know, I hope I can get through it. Um, but I, I think I can, I think I will, and it hopefully isn't too ugly, but here we go. Uh, so, this is uh, written uh, in my journal. It says, uh, my dad, and, and okay, let me, let me say this, Miguel Alejandro Navarrete. And I have to say that because that is always how he introduced himself, which me and my brothers always cracked up about, but everything he owned, everything, you know, he always wrote his full name on everything. And when he introduced himself, that is how he introduced himself. So um, it says, uh, my dad, Miguel Alejandro Navarrete, died last week, five days ago. Um, I have sung, cried, prayed, sat in a trance for the past days. I am so glad I could be with him in his last days. I love him. Uh, and let me just say this. This is not prepared, okay? I wasn't planning on sharing all this, so the grammar, everything, I'm sorry, guys. I want you to hear my heart, and I want you to hear some of the things I've learned. It says, um, thank you, um, thank you for him, Father. Thank you that he loved me, that um, he loved us all. I know he is in your hands, as we all are. Thank you that I could help him, that I could help him um, up, that I could help him out of bed. Thank you that I could cook for him, that I could talk and listen to him. Thank you that um, you were with me, that you gave me people we needed, nurses, doctors. Thank you for the paramedics who helped him, who were kind to him, who felt for him. Thank you, Father, that people were very, very kind. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you for our family, and I won't read all the names, but I have them all here. Thank you for our friends and family. Um, Father, um, help us to love better, to love deeper. Help us to care more. Help, help us to hear people's souls. And Father, um, uh, help us not to bite and devour each other and be petty and selfish with each other. Help me to love deeper, to care deeply, and please help me to, and please help this, oh, forget that part. As I was with my dad, I was seeing an old, frail man, but remembering when he was young, strong, handsome, and the rock of my life. Then I thought, ah, of some of the memories, some of the memory stones of his life. Our lives, good and bad, high points, his smile, care, his love, low points, addiction, anger. I thought of my grandpa and his dad and all the things that played out there, all the pain and sorrow that happened there. Um, where I think of all, when I think of all these things, the summary of our lives, the most important thing that stands out is love, how we love, how quickly we love, how deeply we love. Love is the difference. Love, um, the, the love we have for one another, the forgiveness that we give. None of us, not one of us, not me, 
not any one of us, do everything right. We do not always love. Holy Father, you are love. You have always been love. Even before I understood it, you were love. You are love. How do we not get this right? How do we get this wrong? How do we focus on so much meaningless stuff and not understand this? Why does it take so long? Why did it take me 40 years to begin to understand that love is the greatest commandment? Father, help us to know better. Help us to love more. Help me, help us, help us all. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crazy prayer, but Father, to leave my fears be help me to leave my fears behind, help me to connect with you and to know you deeply and to know you better in Jesus' name. So, you know, obviously you can see a lot going on there, a lot maybe a little scattery. But, you know, when I, I was sitting with my dad one night and I was thinking, as this kind of says, you know, about his life and, you know, seeing him again here, I said this already, but seeing him as an old man when I can really vividly remember him as a young man. And I know there have been a lot of things that have happened in his life and a lot of regrets that he told me about and a lot of sorrow that he had about things that happened. And, and yet all that mattered was that he loved me and I loved him and that God loved him. That was all that mattered in that moment. And, you know, it did make me realize, oh my gosh, we get so caught up in so much garbage and, and so many things that will never, ever, ever, ever matter. They will not be what we're thinking about when we're dying. And... You know, I started reading this book that Joanne gave me, um, and here's a quote from it. It says, when you love, give it everything you've got. And when you've reached your limit, give more. And forget the pain of it, because if you face your death, it is only love, um, love you've given and received that will count. And all the rest, the accomplishments, the struggle, the fights will be forgotten in your reflection. And if you have loved well, then it will have been worth it. And the thrill of it will last you through to the end. And if you have not, death will always come too soon and be too terrible to face. Um, that was written by Alexandra Kennedy. And, you know, I just, I thought about when I read that, you know, part of the book, I thought that is so true. This is so true. This is what our lives are supposed to be about. And, you know, Satan is always there trying to distract us, trying to worry us, trying to get us to focus on, you know, giving our kids things, uh, working hard, all of these things, which, of course, you know, we all have to eat and sleep somewhere. But to forget love is to forget everything. It's to forget the best thing. It's to forget the most important thing. So, you know, I, I think about this and think how I really, really want to change this. I really want to be a more loving person and care deeper and, and you know, express it even more than I do. Um, you know, I think it doesn't do a whole lot of good if I feel all these feelings of love for people, but I never say it. And so, you know, I, I think I, I definitely want us to do that. And um, I'm sorry, here, let me, I'm trying to get somewhere else here. Eek. Okay, well, um, you know, and, and I want to read this part because here's, here comes the trouble right here, okay? Um, so I read all that really great stuff about love, and I told you all these things that I learned at my dad's bed, and, you know, just, you know, all this wonderful stuff, okay? So here's my problem. Um, this is my, 
another thoughts or prayers, whatever it is. Um, Father, you know that I have been that I have identified with being a fighter for my whole life. That my life aim was to be tough, to fight, to speak up, to stand up, and to make a difference with force. This is who I have thought I have been. This is what I thought defined me. This is who I am. This is how, if you go back to all the people in, in our lives and ask them a few things about who I am, I'm pretty sure that these things will be in that description. But it's, okay, but then I go on and it says, there is so much going on in this world, many things that have been said, that have been done. Um, we can't even keep track of how much has happened in just this year. Um, and some of these things have infuriated me. I mean, okay, <laughs> I know probably from your perspective, you're thinking, <clears throat> okay, here's this, you know, little person with, you know, she's 5'1", and she's so scary. Um, I know I don't look scary, but I feel furious sometimes at some of the things that I hear on television, that I see play out, that, you know, we find out on the news, whatever. You know, lots of things that have angered me, that have made me feel like yelling, yelling, that have made me feel like cursing. I mean, really, like, I wish I could. That's how I have felt sometimes, fighting or hitting somebody because things make me so mad. I'm talking blood boiling, eye popping mad <laughs> at many things. The injustice of the world, the, the stuff that is happening has made me so furious, but here we are, 2020, you know all the things that have happened, you know all that's going on right now, we have elections very, very soon, all of this stuff, and I have never felt weaker. I have, I have never felt weaker, that just when I hear about a situation that makes me, makes my adrenaline go. I feel ready to get into a fight about it. And then I realize, wait a second. Um, when my dad died, I felt like the last bit of adrenaline I had drained. I felt like I can't fight that. And so what do I do? What do I do about that? You know, here we are in the worst of times, for us anyway. And honestly, I think my fear in life has been not being ready for a fight, not being ready to handle tough situations. It's so ironic to me, so ironic to me, that we are going through this huge crisis and I feel so weak. It, it feels like, wait, what? This isn't, this isn't right. Like, how can this be? How can I not be ready for a fight? You know, and in a movie, you know, if I imagine myself in a movie, I feel like this should be my finest hour. This is what I was created for. This is when I should stand up and fight and stand up and speak and do something, right? But I physically do not feel like I can do that. And it has made me stop and wonder, you know, I don't think this is a coincidence. I don't think that in a time of such tribulation um, that I don't feel like I can fight. I don't think that this is a coincidence. Um, you know, I, I think that something has to change in my thinking. 
something has to change in my philosophy. You know, when I feel, when I see and I feel, um, when I think about, you know, my dad and all the love I felt for him, and I'm realizing, gosh, this is what life is about, to love deeply and faithfully. And then I put it in the days that we're in, and there's a collision of belief. And I feel like there has been an anxiety inside of me of what to do. Do I love or do I just punch him? What, what, what do I do? You know, and I, I have this, this feeling like, what? What? How can this be? How can it be that it's a time to fight and I'm like talking about love? And, you know, I think of all the people who have wronged me or who have wronged us or who have wronged others. I think of arrogant people saying arrogant things. I think of all the liars. Oh my gosh, I have not realized how like particularly sensitive I am about liars. But what about all the malicious people? What about the people who hate? What about the people who discriminate? What about the people who kill, who abuse, who destroy, who are racist? No, I feel like, no, how can I love these people? I, I recognize that some of these people are myself. But, you know, I mean, I think of, you know, who hasn't hate, who hasn't abused somebody. I mean, we are all guilty. So anyway, whatever. But I feel like to when somebody is blatantly living like this, how, how do we reconcile this? No, I don't want to love that person. I don't want to love that person. And at the same time, I hear God saying, yes, yes, you must love. Eesh. I'm in a battle because I feel this incredible insight and yet this huge problem of evil. <laughs> and I feel like I'm in a, a place of a fundamental shift here. Like what is my philosophy on, on life, on fighting? being tough, being strong, being rude or sarcastic or whatever. I mean, is, is that my new philosophy with these changing times? No, can't be. It is what I feel inside. It is what I want to do. It is what comes natural to do, but it isn't really the thing that's gonna matter in the end. It's not really what's going to matter. So I think of this scripture in Isaiah 55 in verse 8. And it's God. And he says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your, way, are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. Oh, <laughs> okay. Those are God's thoughts. Or that, that's what the, the real truth is, is that God's ways are higher than my ways. God's thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Um, you know, and I, I think, oh my gosh, like all this time, somehow in my philosophy, the fighter in me has still tried to fight situations, has still tried to force situations. Um, and I, I think there's, okay, let's go on. In Jeremiah 31, three, it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you 
with unfailing kindness. That's how God has treated us. In um, Exodus 15, 13, he says, um, in your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, what? Okay, in your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. Oh, in God's strength, he will guide us. Not my strength, not my fight. In God's strength, he will guide us. In Hebrews 13, five through six, it says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say in confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Worry, hate, fear cannot be our answers. Fight, sarcasm, maliciousness, none of that can be the answer. And yet, I can't help but think Jesus was perfect, and Jesus loved perfectly, and Jesus was not quiet, and Jesus loved completely. He still spoke. He spoke the truth. In um, John 1, 17 says that, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You know, so being loving, love being the answer, doesn't mean we're soft, doesn't mean we're cuddly or fuzzy or pink or whatever we think when we think of that. It is strong. Love is strong. But love trusts in God. God is love. God will deal with all the stuff that's happening around us. He will give us the words to say. And you know, sometimes some of those words are not easy to say. Some of those words are scary to say, but if they're truth and they're spoken in love, we should say them. And I think that in this time, if we can reconcile, I know I'm not the only person who has this struggle. You know, it's easy to love the ones we love and it's hard to love the ones we don't, right? It's hard to love our enemies. It's hard to love the people who lie about us or the people who slander us or the people who, in spite of how clear it seems to us, they don't see it. You know, I, I just don't understand. There's so much I don't understand about that, so much I don't understand why people can't see, and yet they don't see it. We are still called to love. We are called to speak. We are called to have deep convictions. We are called to stand our ground. But we have to do it in love. We have to do it in trust in God. And we have to do it in his time, like really being aware of what the Spirit is calling us to do and not jump ahead, try to take control, try to, you know, wrestle things to the ground, but really love and trust what God is doing at this time. And I just, I think it's kind of ironic and kind of funny that at this time where I would really feel like I've got to get out there and fight, that I don't feel like I can get out there and fight. And I know that's not a coincidence. And God always leads us and he always guides us. And I think that there's a way through this. And I, I, I am praying every day to love more, to love deeper, to to set myself aside, to not care about um, what people think or don't think, and realize God is the only one that matters. What God knows, what God sees, what all that he hears, that's all that's going to matter. And so I say all that to say, I know that this is a hard teaching. To love like Jesus loved is a hard teaching. 
but it is one worth it. You know, it's kind of like what that writer wrote, that if you're going to love, give it everything. Give it all you've got. And when you think you can't love anymore, love more. Because it will be worth it. So in light of all that's going on, sisters, in light of everything that's happening, and all the pain and all the suffering that we have felt caused by other people, um, let God be God. Let God be the judge and trust in him. He will do what he needs to do. So I hope this has all made sense and that you can get something out of it. And next week, um, we'll have another devotional for you. We'll start our series on uh, Soul Sisters. So take care. I love you. Thank you so much for your love. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope this has been educational and inspiring for you. If you'd like to know more, please join us by going to study.laicc.net and we'll be happy to contact you and help you in any way we can.